Hi, this is Jeff, and I am going to show you how I do my coloring using the B-Pelt Multifill and Flatten plugins in Photoshop. I get a lot of questions as to how to use these plugins, and they're not the most intuitive thing to get set up, but once you know how to use them, they can save you a lot of time, so I thought it might be helpful to show people how I do it. Anyway, you can see here I just have a quick drawing of Marigold that I did. Uh, I have all of the inks on one layer here. Uh, and the first step in this process is to duplicate that layer. So I'm going to right-click it, hit Duplicate Layer, hit OK. Now I have two copies of the inks. On the lower copy, I'm going to zoom in, and just using my regular brush tool, I'm going to quickly draw in these black borders. And these borders are going to be where I want there to be shading. Uh, I'm doing this kind of quick and dirty with a vague idea of a light source coming from that general direction. You can get as detailed with this as you want, but I like to keep it simple, because uh, I think that looks just fine. And with that done, one thing you want to make sure is that there are no little gaps like you see right here, uh, that you have everything trapped out accurately, because the plugin will get confused uh, if you leave any gaps between these lines. So you want to make sure that you have everything blocked out exactly how you want it. With that done, I'm going to create a new layer beneath all of the ink layers and fill it with solid white. I'm then going to take the layer with all of these borders and I'm going to merge it down onto that white layer. So now I have the original ink layer, which is just black and then transparent pixels, and then beneath that I have a layer which is the original inks with the borders and, um, and white pixels filling all of the empty space. Uh, after that, I'm going to, with that lower layer selected, I'm going to go up to Image, to Adjustments, and then Threshold. This defaults to 128, which is what I want, so I'm just going to hit OK. And then what that does is it will delete any pixel on that layer that is not pure black or pure white. So if you look here on my original ink layer, there's a lot of anti-aliasing. The ends of the lines are semi-transparent because of how I have my brushes set up. Uh, but on the lower layer that I've run the threshold on, uh, it's just black and white pixels. And this is very important because the filter is designed only to work on black and white. It'll get really confused if you have any other colors or any transparencies or anything like that on the layer that you're trying to run the plugins on. So with that done, uh, it's time to run the plugins. Uh, the first one you want to run is the multifill. So I'll go to filter, go down to B-Pelt, and click on multifill. It gives you all of these options. Uh, I don't actually use any of them except for the color palette one, which I have set to just random colors because I find that works pretty well. Uh, so I'm just going to hit OK. And you can see what that's done is it's filled every uh, area of white space on that layer with a random color that is not the same as any other area that's adjacent to it. Um, so with that done, I'm going to go up to Filter again, go down to B Pelt, and hit Flatten Pro. And what's that? what that's done is it's basically taken all of these areas of color and merged them together thereby erasing the black lines that I drew in to function as borders. So on that lower layer, you can see now, I just have solid blocks of color, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Because now, what I can do is, I can just go in with my paint bucket tool, and using the palette I have up there on the right-hand side of the screen, I can just very quickly and easily drop in the colors that I want to use for shading without having to manually paint them in or, you know, carefully use the magic wand to select things, that sort of thing. Um, there are a couple little areas where I need to go in and clean it up by hand, like this here, there's a little bit of overlap, so I'm just going to go in with the brush tool and clean that up. And up here, I'm going to start filling in her hair, but you can see that her hair is the same color as the background. And that's because of this little gap right here. Uh, because I didn't block that off correctly when I was doing all of my trapping, uh, the plugin thought that her hair and the background were the same area, so it filled it all with the same color, which you can see here. Uh, I'm going to get around that simply by selecting that whole area with the magic wand, and then just go in with a regular brush and color in her hair manually. Um, and you can see this is going to take me quite a bit longer than just dropping things in with the paint bucket because I have to be much more careful about 
what parts I paint and what parts I don't. It's still pretty quick, uh, but you can really see how much time B-Pelt saves over coloring by hand. So with that colored in, I can zoom back out, and using the magic wand I'll just select and delete the background. And there we have it, that's all of the basic coloring done. Uh, after that, uh, to color in her eyes, I'll make a new layer between the original inks and the color layer, and on this in-between layer I'll just go in with a brush and paint in her eyes manually. Um, you could probably do this using the plug-in, but for tight spaces like this, I find it's it's quicker and generally more accurate just to do it by hand. Uh, and there's a little spot by her nose that didn't get paint bucketed in, so I'll clean that up as well while I'm at it. And there we go, that is the eyes finished. Uh, to do the hair shading, I will go down to that lower color layer. I'll select her hair using the magic wand, and then using this custom brush that I made that has really long bristles and is semi-transparent depending on how hard I press down with my stylus, I'll go in with a darker shade of brown and just kind of quickly streak in her hair. Uh, generally just kind of keeping in mind the shape of her head and the way the hair is going and that sort of thing. Uh, with that done, I'll then go in with a lighter shade of brown and do some quick highlighting just to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And with that done, the drawing is pretty much finished. Uh, all I have to do is add her glasses, which were on a separate layer, and we're, to go, and we're good to go. Thanks for watching.